GarageBand for iOS version 2.3.17 has arrived. And while the App Store says that this is just a bug fix and stability update, there's actually a bit more to it than that. Before we dive into the patch notes, the most obvious change here is that the GarageBand app got a lovely new iOS 18 dark mode icon. All of Apple's built-in system apps got dark mode icon alternatives as part of the iOS 18 update. Other apps that require to update via the App Store though didn't. If you haven't tried this yet, you can find the dark mode icons by customising your home screen. Long press on your screen to activate jiggle mode, yes that is actually the official name for it. Press edit, then customise, then select dark. Lovely. Last thing before diving into the release notes, I've tried to replicate as many of the issues that this patch addresses on an iPad running the previous version of GarageBand 2.3.16. Let me know if you've had to deal with any of the problems that this update addresses down in the comments too. Right then, under stability and reliability, this update resolves an issue where GarageBand could quit unexpectedly when drummer characters are rapidly swapped, and it resolves an issue where GarageBand could quit unexpectedly when tapping between categories in Alchemy sound packs without touching a keyboard. GarageBand crashing when swapping out drummers is definitely something I've experienced in the past, and it's great to see Apple address it. I haven't come across the second crash myself, and I wasn't able to replicate it either, but if you've had to deal with that issue before, it's now fixed. Under performance, the patch resolves an issue where holding notes on an on-screen keyboard while closing a popover menu might lead to stuck notes and it fixes an issue where switching away from GarageBand while recording could cancel that recording. The note sticking issue isn't something I've experienced myself, but the switching issue is a big one. If you've ever tried to multitask on an iPad while recording your voice, for example in GarageBand, you'll know how infuriating this was. So the issue here is apparently switching away from GarageBand while your recording can stop the recording. So if I jump over... I'm really glad it's been fixed. Under Undo, the Undo button is now available after changing a parameter in the Drummer Editor. The update resolves an issue where a duplicate reference to the same MIDI draw data of the audio region has been removed. Error could come up after performing Undo after loading a new Live Loops grid. And the update fixes an issue where performing undo after removing plugins from an electronic drum kit and then loading another kit could result in missing labels in the drum kit. I wasn't able to replicate any of these problems on my iPad running GarageBand version 2.3.16. The undo button was already present when changing drummer parameters actually. Under plugins, the update resolves an issue where renaming a user created preset could delete it. Again, this wasn't an issue for me and I couldn't replicate it. And under instruments, transpose buttons now work as expected on instruments with a limited key range. This was definitely an issue in some of the more recent producer packs where some of the instruments were more heavily sample based. In the beat sequencer, step lanes can now be reordered in the beat sequencer. Step lanes are the horizontal grids where you place your drum hits. Previously, you couldn't change the vertical order of different parts of your chosen kit, and now you can. A nice quality of life improvement there. On the recording, the update fixes an issue where drummer tracks could incorrectly show a record enable button. Again, not something I think I've ever seen and I couldn't recreate it either. And finally, this is a big one actually. Under General, GarageBand can now load zipped song files with the extension .band.zip that are sent via email. Anyone who's ever collaborated with another GarageBand user via email will have experienced the annoyance of having to constantly zip and unzip project files to keep file sizes down. Well, now you can just directly load up any zipped GarageBand project file when you receive it. Again, another really nice quality of life change there. 
It's great to see Apple are still committed to improving and refining GarageBand for iOS. It was a little bit of a worry with the release of Logic Pro for iPad that they might just cut the app loose, but obviously that isn't the case. Let me know what you think about this latest GarageBand for iOS update down in the comments. And if you found this video helpful, give that like button a good hard slap on the way past. I really appreciate it and it helps more people see this video. And for more information on everything you need to know to get up and running in GarageBand for iOS, watch this next.